are you? Hey, Frank. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm trying to get this camera adjusted. Y'all bear with me here a minute. One of these days, I'll get all these quirks worked out. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Hang on one second. I'll be right back. doing this weekend I'm at my daughter's house we're doing Easter together so um, made deviled eggs earlier and uh, making uh, my cranberry jello salad here in a little while so Okay. Uh, did it, Frank, did it show up that I had scheduled this? I'm going to be stupid. Okay, great, great. Hey, PJ, how are you? Oh, goodness. So, what are y'all doing for East? Hey, Lisa, how are you? Well, I'm doing all right. I, uh, I'm at my daughter's this weekend. Um, we're doing Easter, and uh, it's pouring down rain. It's been storming all weekend, so... So, how many of y'all are fellow Gleeks? Do I have any fellow Gleeks in the chat room? Glee is something that my youngest daughter and I watched. And, uh, of course, I was a choir kid my whole life. Um, I was in the church choir and um, school choir, and um, she was always in the church choir and school choir and, and in drama and everything. So um, we, you know, love any kind of sh shows that have, you know, musicals or like, you know, movies with musicals and um, TV shows with, are you a Gleek, Frank? Cool. Well, in the case of Michelle Carter, <laughs> she, uh, she was an Uber Gleek. <laughs> Are you all familiar with the Michelle Carter and Conrad Roy case? No, 
Okay. Okay. Well, Lisa, I am going to, um, I'm going to give y'all, um, the whole backstory on, on this. And, um, did you watch? I am watching it now. Um, the girl from Plainville on Hulu. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be talking about that as well. Um, to, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Michelle Carter case, um, Michelle Carter was charged with involuntary manslaughter because she encouraged her boyfriend, Conrad Roy III, to, yeah, me too, uh, because, um, she encouraged her boyfriend, Conrad Roy III, to take his own life. And in Massachusetts, there was actually no law against assisted suicide, but they found criminal intent in this case, and so they looked. Uh, so they took it to court. And um, she was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Um, Conrad and Michelle met in Florida in 2012. They were visiting relatives, and um, they met and, and hung out a little bit. And um, she lived in Plainville, and he lived in Fairhaven, which were like an hour apart in Massachusetts. Well, they developed a relationship basically through text messaging and phone calls and, and stuff like that. Um, this generation, um, you know, it's a lot of text messaging. <laughs> um, so, but Conrad had suffered from social anxiety and depression. And he did even try to take his own life once by taking a whole bunch of Tylenol. Um, he even did some videos. He did a he did a video like a video vlog or whatever, um, just talking about things and not understanding what was wrong with him and 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 all that and. Um, he and Michelle got really close, and they found that, you know, that they could confide in each other. Michelle also suffered from depression and anorexia. Um, she didn't really fit in, and fit in at school and stuff, so she, um, they kind of found a, what are you doing? My granddaughter. <laughs> Um, so they, you know, they kind of found their little niche together in their, um, in their mental health issues. Shut the door, Mo. Um, sorry about that. They found, they kind of found their little niche, you know, together in, um, in mental health issues. And, um, at first... Michelle did what she could to try and help Conrad. Um, you know, she encouraged him to get help and everything. And then, for some reason, she flipped the script on him. And um, when he started talking about suicide again, she started encouraging him to do it. Um, she thought she was helping him. She thought that in her mind, she thought that because he wanted to take his life so bad, 
that she was doing the right thing by a encouraging him to do it and if that's what it meant for him to be at peace and be happy then you know who doesn't want to see someone they love happy um you know she just she had some screws loose in her head and her way of thinking but where it turns sinister is that as i said michelle did not really fit in at school um and she had this obsession with the television show glee yeah helping him die when he was healthy yeah he was trying to get better and um if anything he was begging for help but she had this um obsession with the television show glee and you know if you watch the show glee glee was the show for the geeks the, the kids who didn't fit in the weirdos you know the um it had it had its place for everyone who felt like an outsider and she developed a um an obsession with leah michelle who played um rachel berry and corey monteith who played finn hudson leah michelle and corey monteith were not only a couple on the show as Finn and Rachel, or Finchel, if you're a real Gleek, you know the word Finchel, um, they were in an off-screen uh, romance as well. And they were just, you know, they were the, they were that picture-perfect couple. Um, you know, if you remember, like, when um, Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson, you know, the Twilight uh, couple was together. You know, it was just like they they were the, you know, the cute, cool thing. But um, Michelle, she, like, she even tweeted a lot about Glee, and she would tweet at Michelle, or Leah Michelle all the time, and, and whatnot. So, um, closer to July, excuse me, she really got hot and heavy about encouraging Conrad to, to take his own life. And when the police did the investigation, there were 60,000 text messages between them. Yes, uh, assisted suicide was not against the law in Massachusetts. When they prosecuted her, it was not against the law. But they found criminal intent through her text messaging. So that was how they managed to get her on involuntary manslaughter charges, not to mention that it was immoral as hell. But in the month of July, she started really getting hot and heavy about encouraging him to do it. And she would say things like, um, you know, so are you going to do it? Go watch Um, she would go, um, she would be like, okay, so when are you going to do it? Are you going to do it today? Are you going to, and on, on July the 12th, 
she got real insistent with it. And just kept on and on and on and on and on. Now, are you going to do it? Are, the time is right. You're ready. Um, so are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Uh, have you done it yet? When do you plan on doing it? If you don't do it now, you're not ever going to do it. Lisa, I hope this is not bothering you in any way. Because this, you know, this certainly isn't an easy topic. So I hope I'm, you know, I hope you're okay with all this. Um, but she got really insistent. And come to find out. She had these, there was a couple of girls that she went to school with, and they were like school friends, but they didn't hang out after school or anything like that. And she had texted them and told them that Conrad was missing, and they couldn't find him, and she was just worried to death about him. She was just worried sick about him. And all the while, Conrad is not missing. She's in touch with him, telling him to take his life. And you could tell from Conrad's text that he did not want to do it. He wanted help. Anybody that is telling you they're thinking about taking their own life is asking for help. You know, he even said things to her like, I'm worried about my parents. You know, I'm worried about leaving them and and whatnot, and she, oh, they'll be fine. I'll take care of them. They'll they'll learn to live with it and move on. And uh, so, all day and all night on July the twelfth into July the thirteenth, she stayed on and on and on and on him. Well, he went to the beach with his mother and, and spent the day. And the whole time he's at the beach, she's texting him. Are you home yet? Are you home yet? Are you going to do it now? Are you going to do it today? What are, you, what are you doing? And when he got home, uh, she, she kept on and it was like, you know, he, he was scared. And, um, she just kept insisting him that everything would be fine. And that, you know, if he didn't do it now, he wasn't going to do it at all. And so he took a generator of some type. And she told him to go drive to a vacant parking lot and do it. So he drove to Kmart and um, all the time, all the time he's on the phone with her, texting and talking and whatnot. And um, he turned the, the machine thing on, the truck started to fill up with carbon monoxide, and he got out of the truck. Choking. And was just terrified. What did Michelle do? Told him to get back in the truck. And finish. And he did.
and he was found dead later on after yeah that's exactly what she wanted right and um his when he didn't come home his mother reported him and um missing and um they found his truck in the Kmart parking lot. Um, one of the text messages that she had said was she told him to delete the text between them. Now, if you didn't think you were doing anything wrong, why would you tell someone to delete the text? between you and that uh, that person. If you didn't think that encouraging this young 18-year-old kid to take his own life then why why delete the text? Why do you, because you know what you're doing is wrong. Now Conrad's parents were not aware of they weren't really aware of Michelle at all um, and she began contacting them and she um, was just being overly you know um, helpful and um, there for, you know, and comforting his family and stuff. And the family is like, who is this girl? This is just weird. Well, when the police started looking into things and, and, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what led up to Conrad taking his life, they found all these text messages. And um, when Conrad's parents found out, they were furious. Furious. She even held a um, she even held a um, fundraiser for Conrad for mental health awareness called Homers for Conrad, and it was um, because it was like a it's like a baseball uh, thing. She held it in her hometown instead of Conrad's hometown. It was just all sorts of weird stuff. And um, she even asked his mother for some of his ashes. But come to find out, the police and, and all, everyone figured out this whole obsession she had with Glee. And this obsession that she had with Leah and Michelle and Corey Monty, Finn and Rachel. Well, one year prior to this, on the exact date, July 13th, 2013, Corey Monty died of a drug overdose, and he was found in a hotel room in Canada. So how ironic is that? How ironic? How coincidental is it that the same day Corey Monty died a year prior she talks Conrad into taking his own life on the same day a year later and she was making comments and text messages and speeches and and little things of the exact things that 
Leah Michelle and her character Rachel Berry because they did a um, they did a tribute episode um, in October for Corey Monty and a bunch of the characters sang and whatnot and um, you know that was just the toughest episode they ever had to record but she would repeat the same things that Rachel had said or that Leah Michelle had said in interviews and stuff so as I said once the police started looking into all this um, the prosecutor, they decided to indict her and found enough evidence to, uh, of criminal intent that they indicted her for involuntary manslaughter and she was arrested. Okay, I'm so sorry. I, um, you know, I didn't, I, I apologize. I, you know, didn't know that, um, anyone would come to watch that wasn't aware of the case that it would strike such a nerve. I'm really sorry. If you, if you can't stay, I, I understand. Okay, that's fine, Lisa. That, that, no, not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Um, but she was indicted. And, uh, they arrested her on, uh, February the 4th, 2015. And... She went to trial, and these girls that, you know, she had tried to manipulate um, because she was seeking attention, what it amounted to was she wanted to play the grieving girlfriend, just like Leah Michelle. And she wanted all this outpouring of love and all this outpouring of attention and stuff the way Leah Michelle got when Corey died. You know, she was just, she was living in this fantasy world. And, um, you know, it wasn't until those girls found out the truth you know, they, they were being really nice to her and being, you know, supportive and, and everything. And, you know, and then she got a bunch of attention to the uh, little uh, softball thing that she, she did, the little fundraiser and all. So she was just, you know, she, she was loving all the attention and, and it's exactly what she wanted. But the difference between her and Leah Michelle was Corey had suffered from drug addiction since he was a kid. And he got clean and everything. And then he got the gig on Glee as Finn. And, you know, Leah Michelle really loved him. And she, you know, did everything she could to, you know, keep him off drugs and keep him straight and everything. And, but she did not tell Corey to take drugs. She did not tell Corey to take his own life. She, you know, she, she did not tell him to go into an, a hotel room and OD. Um, whereas Michelle, you know, I mean, I've 
been following cases since the late 80s. Awful, horrible, brutal cases. And I got to say, the case of Michelle Carter ranks right up there next to Jody Arias. If you don't know who Jody Arias is, be glad. She's nuts. killed her boyfriend and tried to cover it up. But Jody, or excuse me, Michelle did some very similar things to, to what Jody did. Like Jody sent Travis's grandma flowers. She went to Travis's funeral. You know? Michelle did the same thing. So, you know, it, it's just, you're talking about people that, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, when this happened, my youngest daughter was the same age as, as Conrad and Michelle. And when this happened, she and I had a long talk about this. And I was just like, you know, how, how do you, how do you do, I could not face someone's parents who my daughter talked into taking their own life. And, of course, my, my daughter, she's like, you know, well, Mama, I would never do anything like that. And there were a couple of instances when she was in school where she had a couple of friends that were um, doing things they shouldn't be doing. And um, one of the girls, we decided that we should report it to the school counselor. And we did. And um, CPS actually looked into the situation. This girl was cutting herself. And she was claiming that she was being sexually abused. Another girl um, that was a friend of hers um, kept running away. And um, one of the times that she ran away, um, my daughter knew where she was at, found out where she was at, and we, you know, went down to the police station with her foster mother, and, um, you know, did the right thing. You, you know, when someone, when you know, as they say, see something, say something. When you know someone is being hurt, or doing something to hurt themselves, or, you know, threatening um, to take their own life, and, and things like that, you encourage them to get help. You do what you can to get them help. But, anyway, Michelle was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter and she um, she was first um, got two and a half years for, for it which was then reduced to 15 months well she didn't even do a year she uh, only did 11 months and got out for good behavior imagine that but um, she has uh, kept a very low profile you know and I can't imagine what it's like for her now that the whole world knows what she did I mean you know 
these serial killers, they got women writing to them in prison professing their love and wanting to marry them. Um, but, you know, this is a, a young, still a young girl, and I can't imagine how she's, you know, moved on to try and function in society and make new friends or even date again or or anything like that um you know um like i said she keeps a very low profile so you know there's just not much talked about or or written about her now but um this new hulu series the girl from plainville I I actually love the way they're doing it. And it it's watching this series is like watching it all happen in real time. Like you're like you're there physically watching all this stuff go on back and forth between Conrad and Michelle and and all that. Because, you know, as I said, when this case happened, I, I was just floored by it all. And, you know, it's one thing to read the, the stories and stuff printed in the, you know, news articles and, and whatnot and, and even watch the trial and stuff, but to see the relationship between Michelle and Conrad is just, it, it's, it's bizarre. Um, it really shows just how sinister the whole situation was. Even more so than just reading about it. You're now seeing it through this series. That on Hulu, and it's it's disturbing. It's very very disturbing. So um, Frank, are you still hanging with me? But, yeah, I just wanted to, um, I wanted to come on and, and talk about the case and, and uh, see if any of you were watching the series or had followed the case when it happened or whatnot. Um, but this is in no way sponsored by Hulu, but um, I do encourage you that if you have Hulu, Go and watch the series. It's called The Girl from Plainville. Lifetime did a um, movie that it, called I Love You Now Die, um, which I, I've not seen that one. I, I've heard it's awful, which Lifetime has no integrity whatsoever. But yeah, um, yeah, if you get a chance, go watch The Girl from Plainville on Hulu. And you can see for yourself just how cold-hearted and cold-blooded and soulless and... And she might as well have killed him herself. Because... That's basically what she did. And, you know, this was a new thing, you know, and there was a lot of talk about it, you know, can you hurt, about hurting people, and can you hurt someone to the point of criminal, you know, through your words? Well, yeah, you can. We're living in a whole new age. 
you know. Um, you have these people out here that hide behind a computer and they hide behind avatars and fake names and all this kind of stuff. And they're out here saying things to people that they would never say to their face in real life. And you also have situations where you get enough bullying at school and then you go home and you've got to be, and you're being bullied on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and stuff. And, you know, people telling you to go kill yourself and just horrible stuff. You know, um, I actually, I mentioned Jody Arias earlier. Um, I actually, that was when I actually found out just how crazy um, computer land was. And the things that people did, calling and threatening witnesses live. Um, calling um, the domestic violence woman that testified for her, calling and threatening her, calling places where she had um, speeches lined up and calling them and telling them not to have her. And, I mean, just all kinds of horrible stuff. And... They, like, literally threatened everyone who was supposed to have testified as character witnesses for Jody, um, to the point that they, they never even got on the stand. They, 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 they didn't want any part of it. They didn't, they didn't want to get on the stand and testify for, and, like, her old boyfriend Daryl did, but, um, I mean, he was just belittled. So, um, and, you know, we see that going on now um, in the Summer Wells case. People are calling CPS on each other just because they don't like another creator or whatever, and they got all this drama and beef and shit going back and forth. They're calling CPS on each other. They're calling Hawkins County on each other. Saying so and so's uh, on probation and he's not supposed to be here, there, and, and um, you might want to go check and 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 arrest him or it just oh, it's so frustrating. Like this is why they keep telling YouTubers to stay out of shit and that they're derailing the case. I didn't realize these people that had beef with each other were calling in bullshit. You know, I thought it was just a bunch of people calling in saying, well, well I heard on YouTube that so-and-so said this, and, and you might want to go check and see if you can find somewhere here or there or whatever, and then you got these psychics calling in and whatnot. And, but no, no, that's not the case. That is not the case, unfortunately. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's sad. Yesterday marked 10 months that Summer's been gone. And we are no closer to finding her than we was the five minutes after she went missing. Well, that's all I have for today. Um, like I said, I wanted to see if there were any, um, if anyone else, you know, watched the, uh, watched the show, The Girl from Plainville, and, uh, followed the case, and, uh, and talked about it a little bit, and see what you all thought, and what you, you know, 
there were back when it happened there you know a lot of people were on the fence about things and um i wasn't i was clear from the very beginning she is wrong and she needs to go to jail for what she did That's just how I felt about it. It was, you know, for a crime that was not so, you know, that didn't have that gruesome, gore, horrific um, crime committed, you know, um, like I said, this this ranks up there, right next to Jody Arias, as one of the most horrible cases I've ever followed. So, well, I am going to go in here and uh, hang out with my granddaughter a little bit, and. Uh, wait for my daughter to come home from work and then I'm going to stir up my grand cranberry jello salad and uh, get that in the refrigerator and whatnot and uh, I want to wish you all I want to wish you all a very happy Easter and hope you're getting to spend time with your family as well so, and as always, please be the change that you wish to see in this world. As Michael Jackson said, it starts with the man in the mirror. Peace out, everyone. Happy Easter.